He did all of that. He preached the gospel. He healed the sick from their diseases and from their sicknesses, including those who were possessed. So therefore, what Jesus did back then is what we are to do now and is what we are to do tomorrow. His word never fails. His word is everlasting. It will never end. It is everlasting. And because what I've just said is in the word, it is everlasting. Amen? Amen. 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 In Luke 24, verse 49, it says, I'm going to send you what my Father has promised. If you would take your Bibles, and you can follow along with me, because I'll be going to different scriptures as the Holy Spirit leads. But it says, I am going to send you what my Father has promised. So he told his disciples to stay in the city until they have been clothed with power from on high. You need the power of the Holy Ghost from on high. Amen? That's the only power that you need. The power of the Holy Ghost. We need to be empowered with his power in order to do his service and his will in order to do what he has commanded us to do, in order to fulfill the Great Commission, we must be empowered by the Holy Ghost. You cannot do this by yourself. Amen? So this is in his word again. And because it is in his word, it is everlasting. He said, because you shall know the truth, the truth shall set you free. Because who the Son sets free is free indeed. Do you think that you know the truth here on tonight? Do you think that you have all of God's truth tonight? Because there are many of us who are walking around in this world who still are in the church, but we do not know God's truth. God wants us to know his truth, because it is only by knowing his truth will you be free. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Now in Mark 16 verse 15 to 18 it says, and he said to them, that's his disciples now, Go into all the world, the Great Commission, preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And again, these signs shall follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly, anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick. And they will recover. How many of you believe that if you are a child of God... And you've been anointed by God. You have the power of the Holy Ghost within you. How many of you do believe that you can lay hands on the sick and pray for them and they can be healed? Amen. Because the word of God says it. The word is true. And again, you find that in Mark 16, verse 15 to 18. Just in case you by any chance happen to doubt in your mind... That when you see certain things within the body of Christ, whether it is true, whether it is from the Lord, whether some people question it when they go in certain churches. Amen. Amen. I was raised Catholic, and I 
12 years old, I accepted Christ as my savior. I got fought by every devil from the pits of hell. But thank God I'm here today, I'm alive. Yes, I did backslide and now I'm back. I came back, but I came back with power, the power of God, the power to fight, the power. This is a war, this is a war that we're in. When you want to serve God with all your heart, that's when you get attention. You get attention from the forces of hell. That's why the Lord says, we have to fight this war. We have to fight. The righteous take it by force. This is not something that you should lay down and relax and, and, and play patty cake about. This is a war. We're fighting a spiritual war. So we have to be prayed up. We have to be fasted up. Prayed up. Constantly hearing from the Messiah. Because he's the one who's going to empower you to stand. And when all else fall, you will stand. Amen? So, it goes on to say now in um, Mark 16 verse 20. Again, I'm hitting you with some things that I want you to really let sink in. Because when you know these truths, you won't have any doubts in your mind. And you will be able to take your authority. Amen? Mark 16 verse 20. So when he commanded them to do this, the disciples went out. Then the disciples went out, okay, and preached everywhere. Isn't it wonderful when the Lord commands you to do something, you just do it? I mean, life is so much easier when you just do what God says. As long as you know that you're going to have to take it by force. You can possess this land, but you got to take it by force. It's all yours. Here for your possession, but you cannot stand up and expect it to come to you and expect it to happen. You have got to take it by force. The Bible says it. So the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by, again, signs that accompanied it. So when they went out to preach the gospel, he backed them up. God is not a, a, a one who would lie. Amen. He backed them up. He said, I will send you power from on high. And that's exactly what he did. Peter was one of the most powerful disciples. Yes, he, was. he was one of the most powerful disciples. And he had the power of the Holy Ghost for all the things that, that happened when he would walk on the streets. So the, all the things that would happen with the people when he would walk on the street. He had the power of the Holy Ghost. Even his shadow caused things to happen. Amen? Amen. So now we go on to um, Luke. Luke 11 verse 49 to 51. Now I'm going a little, little deeper. Because of this, God, in his wisdom, said, I will send them prophets and apostles, some of whom they will kill and others they will persecute. And therefore, this generation will be held responsible for the blood of all the prophets that has been shed since the beginning of the world. From the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who was killed between the altar and the sanctuary. Yes, I tell you, this generation will be held responsible for it all. God does not take it lightly when his prophets are ridiculed. He does not take it lightly. He said, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. There are some of us in the church today who do not believe that in this age, there are prophets and prophetesses who the Lord Jesus has anointed to do his work. He's raising up a remnant of people in these last days to do his work. And these are the remnant of people that he's raising up. 
Whether you want to accept it, believe it or not, it is Bible and it's truth. Luke 11 verse 17 to 20. So Jesus knew the thoughts of the people and he said to them, any kingdom that is divided against itself will be ruined and a house divided against itself will fall. So when they were, when Jesus was performing these miracles in those days, they accused him of, who can tell me what they accused him of? Did I say that right? Yes. They accused him of having a, having a demon in him. Now, if they accused Jesus of that, why do you think that they would not accuse you today if you are a prophet or a prophetess? They're going to accuse you today. They did it to Jesus. <laughs> so this is something that we have to be aware of. It says, he said, if Satan is divided against him, how can his kingdom stand? I say this because you claim that I drive out demons by Belizebub. But if I drive out demons by Belizebub, if he's driving out demons and he's possessed by a devil, why would the devil be afraid of his, of his own spirit? Hello? I have, I have the devil in me. You have the devil in you, okay? And I'm going to drive you out with the same spirit? <laughs> okay? It has to be the Holy Ghost in me that's going to cause you to go out. Amen? So, it's so obvious that what they were saying, it was the, the, the enemy speaking through them, you know? So he said, now, if I drive out demons by Belizebub, by whom do your followers drive them out? Okay, so they have people following them, and of course, these people claim to have whatever, I guess, something better than what Jesus had to do all these things. But these people are sorcerers. They're sorcerers, and they're not using the power of God to do the things that need to be done. So Jesus asked them that question, who do your followers drive them out? So then the kingdom of God, he says, has come to you. So when you see a man or woman of God who walks in the prophetic, they basically have that kingdom of God in them and the Lord can use them to help you. Because guess what? Our anointing is not for us. It's not for us. It's for other people. It's to help other people. It's to help bring back the lost sheep to the fold. It's not for us to keep. We can't be greedy like that. We got to go out here and do the work. What does set the Lord. We have to go out here and mix and mingle and get dirty. Down and dirty so that we can pull back the sheep to the lost fold. That's what the anointing is for. It's not all this glitz and glamour and a lot of things that I, I witness with my own eyes that goes on in the body of Christ. And, you know, churches who don't want the, holy, the power of God to flow in it because of various skepticisms, wrong teachings. <laughs> I'm being real here. Wrong teachings, re teachings, religious bondage. That's what it is. So... I'm here tonight to tell you that the Bible is truth and what the Bible says is it will never change. Amen. No matter how we try to tweak it here and tweak it there, it will never change. I got two more scriptures and then I'm going to wrap up this part. And in Acts 2 verse 17 it says, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit, pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. 
your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. When I first read this, when I was not mature in the spirit, I thought, what is this? Could this really happen? Yeah, that's what I thought. But as I got closer to the Lord and he started to speak to me about things, it's when I realized, you know, the Holy Spirit will open your heart to understand, open your understanding, remove the cobweb that's in our minds that the enemy has placed there to keep you in the dark. So as I seek the Lord and got more mature in the spirit, he started to reveal to me, this is not for just back then. This is for today. This is for now. When we see these little children in the churches praising God, and we can't, we try to quiet them down. Uh 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 uh. God might fill them right there. He filled the baby from in the womb, remember? <laughs> he was filled with the Holy Ghost when, um, um, who was it that was pregnant? Lord have mercy, I'm throwing up like, huh? Yes. When she was pregnant with John, that baby got, why did I bring that up? Did, ooh. The Lord, the Lord is speaking tonight. He did that when the baby was in her womb, okay? Ooh, hallelujah. So what we, when we see little children praising God, leave them alone. Let them be. Because you never know. God has got his hand on them to do his work. It might not seem like it now, but you watch. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Does the Lord speak to you in visions and dreams? Yeah, you should write them down. I never used to write them down. And he spoke to me and said, yeah, you need to write them down. Because this is the storybook of where he's going to take you. That's how you're going to know the direction for your life. When he shows you these visions. He, let me explain something to you. There are closed visions. Um, there are open visions, sorry, that you see when you're sitting up in the middle of day and you see a picture just flash across your mind or in front of your face, a picture of something or somebody. That's an open vision. A closed vision is when you're sleeping at night and you see a picture while you're in de your deep sleep. That's a closed vision. And then there's a dream, which is like a storybook. It goes from one thing to the next thing to the next thing. That's a dream. So, when you write these things down, categorize them. Open vision, closed vision, dreams. Then when you get a word from the Lord, whether he speaks it into your spirit, or whether he speaks it through his prophet or prophetess, write it down. This is the track record. This is the map for your life. This is the map that the, the Lord has planned for you. The theme of this event is Jeremiah 29, verse 11 through, I think it goes through 12. I might go a little beyond 12. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. And you shall come to me and call upon me. This is when you... I'm going to jump ahead just a little bit. Oh, that's actually what I'm ending on. I didn't even realize it. Okay. And you, he said, you will come to me and, and call to me. Call on me. When you realize that you can't do this by yourself. You need him to do what you have to do in this world. You need to find purpose. You're going to start going to him and you're going to start calling out to him. Because he's the only one who knows what's, what, what is ahead for you. He's the only one who can tell you what your purpose is. No man or woman can tell you. No book, no matter who the author is, can tell you what your purpose is. Only God. So he says, you will come to me and you will call on me to find out about purpose. The plan he has for your life, and I will answer you. Yes, yes. It's so simple. You don't have to go to Tom, Dick, and Harry calling this person and that. Well, you know, I don't know.
know what I'm gonna do. I don't know, no, I don't, I don't know. I just don't know. I wonder if I should. I wonder if I should. I wonder. I wonder if I should take this job. I wonder if I should go to buy this outfit. I wonder. You know what? What a waste of time. You won't even have to wonder about anything. As simple as what to wear every day. As simple as what to eat every day. He tells you everything. I love it. And when he tells you, you can't go wrong. Nobody can fool you. Nobody can trick you. Nobody can deceive you or tell you lies. Because you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Amen. So... That's where I'm ending on that bit. Do you have a much better understanding of the way the Lord wants the body of Christ to operate? A little clearer. I could have gone deeper, but there's so much that I want to say tonight that the Lord has instilled in me to say tonight. So I'm just touching on things just a little bit, okay? But you should have enough to search some more to find out about how this thing works. Enough information to dig deep in the scriptures. There's power in the scripture. The more you read it, the more you'll want to read it. The more you want to read it, the more empowered you become. The more you feel him around you. Don't you want that? It fills that void that you have in your life. You know that void where you always feel like, oh, I'm, I have this and I have that, this big house, this big car, this, that, I have a job, I have this, that, that. But I'm so empty. You know what? You can be rich in Christ and don't have anything. You can be rich in the Almighty and don't have anything. <laughs> okay? That's why we need Him. That void that people talk about, all these movie stars that are up there, they're making all this money. Look how many of them have hit rock bottom. They're so lonely with all that money, and they it cannot make them happy. How sad. All the riches in the world cannot make them happy. But they've worked for it all their lives in hopes of when they get there. Oh, if I just if I just have this in my life. Oh, if I can just get this in my life. Oh, if I could just get this get this um part in this movie. Oh, oh, if I could just do this or that, I would be fulfilled. And when they get there, it's the biggest disappointment. They don't know what else to do. They say, well, if I go and um do a little drugs or start drinking some alcohol, liquor, whatever. Then I'll feel, I'll feel good. But it's only temporary. It doesn't last. The only thing that lasts is salvation. Knowing God. Knowing God is what lasts forever and ever. As long as you stay hooked to the plumb line, you will be fulfilled if you do not have a penny to put together in the bank, you will be rich in Christ. Okay. Now what I want to do is just briefly go over for a little longer. I'm trying to keep up with schedule. And I don't know about schedule tonight. I think God's going to have his way tonight. Amen. <laughs> God's going to have his way tonight. Okay, so um, what I want to do is the Lord said to feed my sheep. That's what he told me to do. Feed my sheep, okay? By preaching his word and prophesying to his people. So I don't know what God is going to do tonight, okay? So just have and keep an open mind. When this happens, things, the miracles will happen in the room because there's power in the word. But I need you to get your faith level up there with me. Will you get your faith level up there? Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Amen?